Welcome back, Spell Slingers. Today we have an awesome game featuring four of the five new pre-con decks recently released with Ikoria. But even better, we have two new players not only to the channel, but to Commander. Give a big welcome to John and Peter. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the game. So I won the die roll. I start off with my drawing. I play a Bajuka Bog targeting Pat to get it out of the way. Don't want him using that uh, powerful graveyard. And I pass. Peter plays a forest and passes. John plays a land, frontier bivouac and passes. Pat plays a jungle shrine and passes. I play a shadow blood ridge. Tap two for a Orzov signet. Pass to Peter, he plays a Orzhov Basilica and passes. John plays a Moss Warp Bridge, triggers the Hideaway. Taps one and plays Soul Ring. Patrick plays a land and passes. I play a land and help, uh, I play a land and help John figure out the best place to put his Moss Warp Bridge Hideaway card. I tap three and I pay Kelsine the Plague. It has haste, so I attack and hit Pat for two. I pass to Peter who plays a land. Taps three mana for Commander Sphere and passes. John plays Command Tower for turn. Plays four mana for the sad robot and passes the turn while he searches for his land. Patrick plays a forest for turn. Pays three for a reclamation sage. Targeting John's soul ring. Welcome to Commander John. Passing to me, I draw. I cast General's Enforcer. Moving to combat, I attack with Kelsine, allowing John to block with Sad Robot and draw on a card. Passing to Peter. Peter taps to cast Arcane Signet. Then pays three for a Solemn Recruit. Second main phase, he sacks his Commander Sphere to draw a card to make his land drop, playing a Plains. And because a permanent left the battlefield, he puts a plus one, plus one counter on Solemn. Passing to John, John makes his land drop, taps out to cast Kalamax, and to help me in post, does this. Passing to Patrick, Patrick untaps, makes his land drop. Taps three to mutate insatiable hemor hemorrhage. In response, I kill Reclamation Sage because I don't feel like losing any life. Putting one one counter on Kelsine. Untap and draw. And I cast my soul ring. Tapping four to cast my command, Jarena Kudro, which nets me one soldier token. I move to attacker, swinging at Peter, who blocks with his solemn recruit. Passing turn, Peter on taps, draws for turn. Taps two for a grizzly salvage. Taking a land, putting the rest into the graveyard, he plays his land for turn. Taps for four to cast Yannick Scavenging Sentinel. He passes while he goes search for his partner. John moves right to attacks. 
attacking Peter with Calamax. And casting a Growth Spiral. Pumping Calamax and getting an extra land drop, drawing two cards. John taps three, plays Commander Sphere, and passes to Patrick. Patrick cat, taps three, casts Migratory Great Horn, mutates onto his creature. We all lose life while he gains a life. Searching for a land, he passes. I untap. One of the fun parts of this Commander deck is trying to get the correct mana filtering through all of your lands. Once I finally figure that out, I cast Adriana and move directly into combat. Having to divide up my combat to get the most out of her. Attacking Peter, John, and Patrick. In response to combat, John uses a Chaos Warp which Calamax copies, putting my commander as well as my general's enforcer back into the deck. Flipping a land and Alicia who smiles at death. Patrick takes his damage as well as John and Peter. Passing to Peter. Peter taps four to cast Blood Curdle on Kelsine. Seems like everyone's really picking on me. I don't know if this is fair or not. Playing a land drop, he bounces the planes back to hand. Attacks John before passing. John in his turn moves directly to combat, coming after me with Calamax. I declare no blocks, feeling pretty confident in myself, until I see he taps all this mana into Strength of Tajuru. I take a whopping 18 damage. He then attempts to use his Moss Warp Bridge, but failed to leave one green mana open to activate it. The joys of learning new cards. With that, he passes to Pat. Pat plays his land for turn. Tapping four for Masked Admirers. He draws his card, passes to me. I start out the, with casting Nahiri the Harbinger, immediately targeting Calamax. I do not want to take another hit from that. I then move to combat, activating Alicia, bringing back Kelsey and the Plague, and then takes me a minute to figure out how best to attack. John takes his damage as well as Peter and Patrick chump blocks. I then pass turn. Peter draws for turn, plays his land. And taps for a selective adaptation. Revealing cards from the top of his library, it reveals quite a few cards. Zatulpa, Karametra, a chroma, several lands. He decides to put a chroma onto the battlefield. He puts Karametra to hand, and the rest go to the graveyard. He then moves to attacks and hits Pat with a chroma. On his end step, John sacrifices Commander's Fear to draw a card. 
on taps. And decides to give a shiny impetus to Pat's creature. Follows that up with a Bonder's Ornament. As well as a Nascent Metamorph. All done, he passes to Pat. Patrick untaps, draws his card. Taps four mana for a Zaxura the Exemplary. Moving to attack, he goes directly at me with his new shiny creature. Again, I'm not sure why I deserve all the hate. Just have a bunch of little soldiers. Passing, I draw for turn. I roll up Nahiri, discarding a card and drawing a card. Tap two, I cast Boros Signet. Filtering my mana. Again, one of the joys of the multicolor mana bases with these pre-cons. I cast Fumiko the Low Blood. I then move to combat. Trying to divide up my creatures, attacking everyone to get the to get the most out of Adriana. Once I finally figure out who I'm going to hit, blocks are declared, and damage is dealt. With that, pass, I pass to Peter. Peter untaps and draws, plays his land for turn. Peter taps to cast his commander. Kethril Aspect Warper, which comes in with Indestructible, Flying, Vigilance, Double Strike, and Trample, thanks to the creatures in his graveyard, as well as five plus one plus one counters. He then taps two for a Splinter Fright, which comes in with four counters, thanks to the creatures in his graveyard. He then declares his attacks at both John at both John and myself, and we both declare no blocks. John takes his turn and moves to attack with his nascent metamorph, revealing a Nyx Weaver off of the top of Peter's library, so his nascent metamorph becomes a copy. Patrick takes the damage. During second main phase, he taps and casts Wart the Raid Mother. Passing to Pat, Pat untaps. Plays his land for turn. Patrick looking to save the day. Completely taps out to cast a profane command putting eight minus one minus one counters onto Peter's commander and gaining Patrick an eight eight Hydra moving to attacks sends a shiny creature at me and I declare no blocks like to live dangerously all the way down to four life He passes to me, I untap, draw my card for turn. Realizing I'm not long for the world, cast a Sanctuary Blade. And then equip the Sanctuary Blade to Adriana. 
trying to figure out how I can survive while still dealing damage. Trying to figure out my best options, I move to attacks. I swing in, activating Alesha, bringing back Kelsey and the Plague. Again, taking me some time to figure out the best way to attack, as well as all of the buffs that each creature gets. Once all, all is figured out, I tap and I cast Citywide Bust to wipe the board. John activates his borrowed Nyx Weaver, returning Chaos Warp to his hand. Somehow I think that card might come back to haunt me. And the board wipe resolves and all the creatures are destroyed. After that, I uptick Nahiri, discard a card, and draw a card. And then pass to Peter. Peter untaps, draws his card. Peter just about taps out and casts his commander again. Comes in with eight plus one plus one counters as well as indestructible flying, double strike vigilance, lifelink trample, and first strike. All thanks to the creatures in his graveyard. With that, he passes to John. John untaps, draws his card for turn. Taps out to cast Calamax. Passing to Patrick. Patrick untaps, draws his card for turn, plays his land. and taps for a Nyssa Steward of Elements. Which nets him a 7-7 Hydra. He scribes with Nyssa and then passes. Surprised that I made it all the way back to my turn. I uptick Nahiri, discarding and drawing. Playing a land, gaining a life, because I definitely need that. I then cast my commander, Jarena Kudro, again, gaining two soldier tokens. I follow that up with a Odric Master Tactician. Peter untaps, draws his card, and then casts Karametra, God of the Harvests. Follows that up with Nikara Lair Scavenger, which triggers Karametra and allows him to go get a land. He then follows that up with a Swift Foot Boots. He then moves to attacks, and when all else fails, you always attack Patrick, taking him out of the game. Now John and I both see we have a common enemy, and decide we're going to do what we can to take him out. 
John makes a deal with me asking if he can attack so that he can use Calamax's ability. I offer to, to chump block. He decides he's going to attack Nahiri, and at first I decide no blocks, but then, thanks to Commander being a casual game, he allows me to take it back, and I chump block. He casts Twinning Staff, and passes the turn. The reason I didn't want Nahiri to take the damage is because I wanted to ultimate her, and see what my deck was able to do to see if my deck had anything in it to stop Peter. First thing I find is Captivating Crew, which is the perfect answer giving me the chance to possibly win the game right then and there. So I activate Captivating Crew, gaining control of Peter's commander. And then activate it again to get a hold of Nakira, the Lair Scavenger, and one last time to get a hold of Calamax. Feeling pretty sure of myself, I move to attacks. I decide to attack John with Peter's commander, as well as Calamax and a soldier and everything else at Peter. And this is where Chaos Warp comes back to bite me, as it takes out the commander and my chances of winning. Peter, thinking he may have had a break, shuffles his library hoping to get a creature to block. Instead, he reveals a perfectly timed soul ring. We then figure out where all the damage goes, taking Peter out of the game and leaving John at one damage. Realizing I should have counted a little bit better before attacks, I pass the turn. John untaps, draws for turn, and he moves to combat. Before blockers can be declared, he taps and casts Teamer Charm, having Calamax fight my only blocker and winning the game. In closing, this game was incredibly fun. At multiple times, any deck could have won. They were well balanced and did some fun and exciting things. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. It was great to see the excitement of two relatively new players get to be able to sit down with some decks and play a really fun game of Commander. I hope you all enjoyed the gameplay. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any of our new content. Have a fantastic day.